Hey everybody, welcome to Coffee with Ken live, the live version today. So I hope you're doing really well. So leaders, what are we gonna do this week? Well, we've been addressing a key question. For some, it's a key headache. How's the ROI your team delivers? Hmm, does it feel like you put in way more effort than what you get from your team? Yeah. Maybe you were thrown into a position of authority without proper development to lead your team. Uh, don't confuse that with learning how to manage resources. They are totally different things. I was thrown into that position without knowing how to lead a team, but I was educated in how to manage resources. But I fixed the problem and I can help you too. On Coffee with Ken, we've been addressing the five shifts previously frustrated leaders make to boost the ROI their team delivers so those leaders get the promotions, respect, and hefty pay raises they deserve. Now, last week, we added an assessment um, to the process to help you measure how well you are incorporating the five shifts. They are called, that assessment process is called the leader's ABCs. I shared how those ABCs directly connect to each of the five shifts. This week, we're starting to look at shift number three. Adopt the soaring success system, which was built to help leaders unlock, engage, optimize theirs and their team's potential. A key aspect, the system helps you know where you, your team are, and upon what you must focus now. Let's go deeper with our question on the ROI your team delivers by looking at where you are currently. Maybe you're a new leader, or maybe you've been struggling for years and can't believe you haven't yet made VP. Either way, we got you covered. Maybe a part of the lack of ROI relates to the turnover your team suffers, especially when top talent goes to your competitors. Yuck. Or maybe you think good riddance to some who have left because they challenged so many of your decisions and made your life a living hell. What if those people had real talent? Okay. What if they did? And were frustrated by the lack of progress from your team. And so they found greener pastures that better utilized their talent elsewhere. It happens so often, it's unbelievable. Here's a tough one for many. How good is your home life? When away from work, are you able to relax without a couple of bourbons? <laughs> or do you feel constant 24 seven need to be connected to what your team is doing, what's going on. Short term, you might be able to survive in these conditions, but thrive? Yeah. How would you like to retain top talent as much as triple productivity and become a respected figure in your organization without feeling like an ogre? What if you could cut through the confusion the noise, the guides, and get crystal clear on your leadership style and leverage it to get your team firing on all cylinders without wasting time, money, other precious resources. Would you wake up more refreshed? Have less anxiety if you enjoyed great success at work and enjoyed your time away from work? Even today, if today that seems like an impossibility. You can have all this and more, much more. The key is that secret weapon. Lead your team, large or not so large, using the principles of flight, which is the basis of our soaring success system. You might ask, what does flight have to do with leading? Crazy connection, right? Well, many years ago, it is what saved me in my first position where I was required to lead a team. So 
for a minute, let's go to, uh, I'm going to do a little screen share here. And oh, I got a mistake here. Yeah, just a second, please. Okay. Yeah, that should be good. Let's show you a couple of slides here because I want to work through them and, and the ideas and the key concepts within these slides. I hope you love or loved your grandparents like I still love these two. Oh my gosh. I still love them. Unbelievably. A tearjerker story I put me on a quest to be the best healthcare executive possible. And it related to them. Uh, it was the last day of my grandmother's life, God rest her soul, and what happened during that time. If hearing the story would help you in some way, let me know. It's tough to share, but I'm happy to share if it helps other people. You know, as life would have it, there was a detour in my journey. First year in college, studying hospital administration, and I won the lottery. Yeah, not this kind, the kind young men dreaded. One night each year, our government used a container like this to pick birth dates, one after the other. The order of the dates picked became the order for those young men drafted into our military. Winning the lottery means I'm one of the last in our country to be drafted. And with people dying in the jungles of Vietnam, I was not a happy camper, let me tell you. But it resulted in something no kid from the projects thinks possible. I got to fly. These are the birds in which I logged the most hours. I loved it. But flying was not my purpose. At the right time, I traded my flight suit for a business suit and used my education to help lead medical centers. After a few months of being placed in my first true leadership position, I began to assess our results. Searching, interviewing, analyzing, studying led me to realize my team was not inspired, not making much progress. There was way too much holding us back, uh, too much dead weight, so to speak, and we were constantly bombarded by issues beyond our control. How about you? Where would your results fall if we analyzed them deeply today? Back to the origin of our system. The obvious conclusion, what's wrong with my team? I needed new, different team members. Well, about that time, I received a wake-up call. Yeah, late one night, I returned to the office and found a piece of paper slipped under my door. When I picked it up and unfolded it, there was a drawing. Then I read the caption, ain't nothing dead, ain't nothing dying, think I'll go kill something? Then I noticed the vulture who was apparently speaking was wearing my name tag. The wake up call from one or more members on my crew and team let me know in no uncertain terms the problem might lie with me, not them. This was a shock, but it helped me realize before I changed my team, I might have to change myself. I was using a totally outdated leadership method and had to find one that worked. Have you ever received such a stark wake-up call? It's rare, and maybe the reason the vast majority of organizations who ask us to help them have no clue why. Even with what some might call heroic efforts, their inputs are just not equaled, let alone exceeded by the team's outputs. After the shock wore off that I could be the problem, I realized I had been thrown into a leadership role without being properly developed to handle that role. How about you? Same. I set out to fix it. I tried books, courses, and workshops. Unfortunately, they all told me what a good leader should be, but didn't address how to achieve success. Have you worked through one or more leadership programs? Name a program you have tried. I'd love to put in the chat feature. We'll pick it up in a bit. Maybe Jim Collins, John Maxwell, Ken Blanchard, Seth Cadin, Dale Carnegie, Patrick Lencioni, Stephen Covey. Any of those or others? Were you instantly transformed into a super leader? Yeah. Most people get mediocre results at best. Because the programs are bad? No. 
most of the programs I tried were good. And yet I was really frustrated because I had no clue how to employ what I learned. Then during one of many sleepless nights searching for the solution, I realized my recent analysis had commonality with the world I had just come from, aviation. I had a crazy thought. I wonder, could there be something similar in getting an aircraft or organization off the ground into its desired destination? I had nothing to lose. So I decided to test the more important aspects that allow a flyer to get an airplane off the ground and to the desired destination. To my utter amazement, it worked. A few months after we incorporated it into our operations, I again measured our results. I was finally leading a team that was inspired, making much progress, not much holding us back, little dead weight, and we were not bombarded by issues beyond our control. I started converting these ideas into our soaring success system. Over time, the system, with many other teams and other leaders on those teams, I shared it with them. So I decided at some point to institutionalize the system and share it with the world. Now, I really only focus on a few leaders at a time, but anybody around the world is welcome to try and partake. So here's the deal. Once you, other leaders on your team, better understand the all important leader role, you will achieve true success versus mediocrity. And one reason we share that you can do this without increasing total cost is because of the force multiplier effect of inspiring, developing aspirations within those you lead as opposed to attempting to motivate daily. Yeah, that doesn't work. Eventually, your team will boost, or will boast, sorry, I'm talking about boost ROI all the time. Your team will boast great leaders who prevent problems. Uh, if you remember shift number four, that's right. Okay, not merely solve them. All right, so I'm gonna stop that share then for a little bit. We'll go back and we'll discuss more of this stuff. So here's the deal. I went from successful decorated aviator to a struggling boss. I was worried about my job to tell you the truth. But then using the soaring success system, I went back to successful and decorated, but now leader. You know, I use my flyboy nickname that you might see, call sign if you will, that's fine. And wear my flight suit to remind you, yeah, I still have it. And I still have the, uh, the flight cap and the aviators, gotta have the aviators, right? Absolutely. I still have all that, right? So I wear them, why? Because I miss those days, well, in many respects, I do miss those days, but I do all this to remind you, the leader of a team, your success will be unbelievable when you adopt our soaring success system based upon the principles of flight. It is truly simple to adopt. Even if you have no desire to be the pilot of an aircraft, take the controls of your organization's plane and live the life of your dreams. Most of you, likely use a decent system to manage your operations. Our system embodies the tools to help you lead your team. We'll help you point and outfit your plane. Balance four forces, they're interdependent and interconnected and deal with external conditions. So if you live or if you feel like, sorry, if you feel like you are putting in way more than you are getting in return from your team, not likely you are living the life of your dreams. Don't continue to live this way and certainly don't believe that's ah, just the way it is. Find your purpose and do great things like Uncle Wiggly Wings. Who? I call this story 5,000 tons and two sticks of gum. You may not know this, but some of you may not have learned this in school or wherever you're too young to remember, whatever. From 1948 to 1949, and no, I was not around then, outnumbered 66 to one Western allies attempted an impossible mission. 
break a Soviet blockade and supply the food and fuel needs for millions in Berlin. Using only three narrow air corridors, and initially, planes only capable of carrying approximately four tons of food and fuel each, that's it, the, our Air Force and the Royal Air Force decided the people of Berlin were worth the effort and attempted to deliver 5,000 tons of necessities daily. As described by General Lucius Clay in charge of the U.S. occupation zone in Germany at the time, there is no practicability in maintaining our position in Berlin, and it must not be evaluated on that basis. We are convinced that our remaining in Berlin is essential to our prestige in Germany and in Europe. Whether for good or bad, it has become a symbol of the American intent. Those flyers did it and made a difference. Not only were the air and ground crews able to meet the need, they added a little humanness to this highly unfeasible undertaking. I showed a picture in the email this week of now Colonel Gail Halverson. He is one of the best known heroes of the day. In a chance encounter with some children in Berlin, Gail realized how severely deprived they were. He offered them, yep, two sticks of gum that he had in his pocket. He was amazed in their response. The kids who went without treats for a virtual eternity in a kid's life didn't battle over the meager morsels, two sticks of gum. Instead, they shared them. Halverson was so moved, he engaged in a personal quest to deliver candy to the youngsters, using self-made parachutes to drop chocolate bars on each subsequent mission. He earned the nickname Uncle Wiggly Wings because he wiggled the wings of his plane to let the kids know he was coming with treats. The approach of the candy bomber was greeted by eager, outstretched hands. Soon, he had other pilots, donors of candy and parachutes from far and wide, sharing in the effort. In all, over 23 tons of candy were delivered during the Berlin airlift. The motivational lift Lieutenant Halverson at the time offered came in little parachuted packages of chocolate proving once again that it's the little human things that make such a huge difference. A few years back, my wife, Kate, made sure I got to meet this hero of mine. Yeah, in February this year, at 101, the big guy called the candy bomber home. Now he likely wears wings full time. God bless you, Gail. You know, a quick note before we close. I really love working with those leaders of teams who are on a quest to be the best, even if they are extremely frustrated at the moment. If either or both of those fit you, let's grab a cup of coffee to help you gain clarity on how to get the promotions, respect, and hefty pay raises you deserve. All you have to do is go to my Calendly page, www.kenpash, Pash is spelled P-A-S-C-H, you can read it on my name tag. Oops, sorry, wrong side. Read it on my name tag there. Dot com slash apply. Not only is this session free, I know how stressful your job is because I was there. Even though we will likely meet virtually, I'll buy you a cup of coffee and we will do our best to help you get where you want to go. And with that, my friends, I wish you the best. All the luck in the world. And if you're looking for more help, all you got to do is reach out.